Tanika Gupta has written for theatre, radio, film and television, including episodes of Grange Hill and EastEnders. When I met up with her, I wanted to ask about her stage writing. We began by talking about scene length and her play, Fragile Lands. Basically, for telly, the scenes are very short. You're writing the scenes that are about a page long. And if you wrote a a scene that was a page long for stage, it wouldn't go anywhere. With the soaps, they're so storylined by script editors that, in in many respects, you're kind of joining the dots. So you don't have the freedom to use your imagination very much. It's very much about writing within a certain guideline, writing within a certain storyline, and making their storylines work. I think A Fragile Land was the first stage play I've ever written which had such short scenes and I have to say I was actually quite nervous about it because I worried that I think there were about 20 scenes in the play which is a ridiculously a large amount of scenes and I've always been told you know when you write for stage you have to have long scenes that go somewhere dig very deep into the you know characters journeys and all the rest of it but for Fragile Land it worked quite well because although I'd written actually quite long scenes we started messing around with them quite a lot during rehearsals and cutting them up quite a lot so that it was almost like film or a television script in that scenes were about sometimes only about a page long and then you'd suddenly put the spotlight onto somebody else and then off they go but it worked because it up to the pace, it meant that your attention was always drawn to another action, but generally it, it worked very well. But what about the people in her plays? I asked about her characters and dialogue. That's the most enjoyable part of writing, I, I feel, is actually just in, inventing characters. And, I mean, you just need to look around at your friends and you immediately see that everyone has their own way of speaking. I think in the early days I used to write a lot of characters with stammers <laughs> and a lot of characters who spoke in a certain cockney rhyming slang kind of, kind of way but as I've got more experienced I've realised actually you, you just need to sit down and listen to the way people speak even if it's you know the person in the corner shop or the guy that serves you cigarettes over the counter you find yourself doing this sort of listening in quite a lot and certainly when I was writing Fragile Land I did a lot of hanging around bus stops listening to teenagers and being absolutely shocked at how much they swore. But hearing words that I'd never heard before, like buff and (laughs) stuff like that, which uh, I immediately went home and scribbled on a piece of paper and thought, I must must use that. And then I thought, but I don't know what it means. (laughs) So I'd have to, to go out and ask people, what does that word mean? I'm not consciously trying to invent an idiom. It just kind of happens certainly with uh, Fragile Land I had a very strong idea that I wanted to have an angry young man in there but who was actually had a heart of gold and that was Omar and I did a lot of hanging around bus stops and I remember the first conversation I listened to these two very very kind of scruffy looking 16 year old boys uh, who I thought were a bit scary but I thought I must listen to what they're saying and basically their conversation was this Oi, you know that Euro thing, man? Well, it's going to happen, you know. <laughs> I mean, that Pete Mandelstein doesn't like it, but I think it's great. <laughs> I mean, like, you can go to Paris and all that, you know? <laughs> it's just that whole thing of how people look and how they speak, and it's just so different. Writing such voices in a script seems to have a lot to do with choosing the right word order. She went on to tell me about this. That's where it helps being Asian because I'm surrounded by very bad English in the family. <laughs> Not bad English, but uh, English that's spoken differently, where sentences that are put backwards almost. So I've always grown up with that, with uncles and aunts. Well, certainly not my parents. My parents spoke very, very good English. But I remember an uncle said to me once, you, you must come to my office one day and bop. I, you must pop into my office. And, of course, I put these in my play because, I mean, they're just so funny. I remember my father died and there was a whole load of people that came to the house. People were weeping and wailing. And it was a terrible, terrible time. And as uh, people were leaving, one of my uncles said to me and my brother, we were standing by the door, completely devastated. And he said to us, make sure your mother is well seduced tonight. And we went, I beg your pardon. And he went, no, no, I mean very well seduced. And what he meant was sedated. Make sure your mother is well sedated tonight. But, I mean, can you imagine a time like that? I mean, it's just... And, of course, I put it into my play. I put it into my play, The Waiting Room. That sort of language is just hysterical. Uh, Kabir, the gardener in Sanctuary, speaks a very strange English. It's very, very correct, but it's all back to front. I mean, he speaks 
it's not grammatically correct. He's he's very articulate. Um, but again, that came very easily to me because of listening. And then actually, you realise that Italians speak like that, and a lot of Jewish people speak like that. And I mean, I do talk a lot as well. I do get in cabs and talk to Afghani taxi drivers and. You kind of hear it's. I think it's that whole thing of the love of stories and listening to people telling their stories. And people only tell you their stories if you talk to them and if you tell them a story. I think it works both ways. I think you can't just go into a cab and just keep very quiet and then hope somebody will tell you something. You get words all the time and little phrases. Like I remember going in a cab and it was an Afghani chap, and he said to me, "You know what they call our taxi firm? They call us Taliban taxis." because there were so many Afghanis working there. And he said this as a joke, and of course I put it in the play. <laughs> I put it in Fragile Land. From the Open University. For more information, go to www.open.ac.uk forward slash use.